Welcome to a new video in my home automation channel where I wanted to share you an experiment that I did where I wanted to find out if I can power my Bluetti power station with a very light solar panel. So if you don't know this Bluetti can charge from a solar panel but it has a maximum capacity I would say for a 200 watt solar panel but here I have a 300 watt solar panel which obviously is not going to work because it has too high voltage but then I managed to make this work by using a small DC to DC converter so that is just to lower the voltage of the solar panel so then the Bluetti can start charging from it and it's already late in the afternoon actually we are getting some clouds as well but well at the moment we are drawing 83 watts or oh, now it's 66 but it was just 190 about a minute ago when I started filming. So you may ask why would anyone do that? If the Bluetti can charge at 200 watts from a 200 watt solar panel then obviously that's only going to keep, uh, provide peak power when it's perfectly aligned and the sun is out but if you have a higher capacity or a bigger solar panel it might be able to provide 200 watts even if it's uh, you know shaded or it's not ideal condition so you should be able to get more juice out of a bigger panel than a smaller panel obviously so the only thing that we needed to solve here is to reduce the voltage so the Bluetti can actually drive the bigger solar panel because otherwise if you just connect the big solar panel nothing happens because Bluetti is going to reject it due to over voltage the reason I found this particular scenario interesting because for me it is easier to find these relatively older solar panels than the fold out uh, you know camping solar panels because uh, nowadays you can find these 300 watt panels on second hand because you know nowadays the typical solar panels are more like 400 and 420 so I can find installations where these older panels are being taken down in order to replace them with higher capacity panels so sometimes they could be cheaper to get than a similar spec or even a smaller spec folding solar panel. So clouds are rolling in and out so I'm not sure if I would be able to capture peak production. It's 83 watts at the moment. Well it's slightly less now but I think I have footage when I first tested it out and I was definitely getting 199 watts out of this big solar panel. And again the input is peaking at 199 at full sun and going a little bit below but definitely not going about uh, definitely not going above 200 and it's not uh, going to switch off uh, due to overpower or over voltage so I think it is working 199 I can't really get it on focus yeah so if you want to do something similar to this, all you need is you need a DC-DC converter such as this one. I'm going to show you, you this up close a little bit later in the video. And of course you have to make your own cables. So what I have here now is I created a cables which uh, is uh, two minutes in an MC4 connector. So that plugs into the solar panel and then it just goes into the input terminal of this DC-DC converter. And the output terminal just goes into the Bluetti into the solar input and that's pretty much it and I don't have to do any tricks so if I remove this then obviously the charging stops and I just plug this in and then you have to wait for a couple of seconds until the the charging circuitry starts picking up the current and then you will see that the the wattage ramps up so I guess we will get 76 watts with this partial sun at the moment so yeah 60 70 watts and as you can see the sun is behind the clouds so it is still getting a decent charge with and you know on an overcast day so let me show you this DC-DC converter up close and later on I can also explain you how the solar panels work based on what I understood through this experiment. So I wanted to show you this DC-DC converter on the bench because it's easier to view it here than the outside. So it is, you know, it's not a big thing, it's really small. And uh, um, wiring up is really easy because as you can see on the left side it has, uh, it has the two input terminals. 
So it is marked as in minus and in plus. Uh, where is the in plus? Yeah, in plus there. There is an on off switch as well, which I don't, you know, I don't bother with the switch. It's always switched in the on position. And when there is power, so a solar, then this LED is going to be lit. And on the other side, we have the outputs. So you can clearly see that it's marked as out positive and out. Ooh, well, that's the out negative. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit of, well, the only bit of confusion is that for the input, the positive is on the bottom and for the output, the positive is on the top. And for the output, I just wired, I think this is a 2.5 millimeter jack. And for the input, I wired the MC4 connectors. And uh, just ignore the, the tape on the negative lead. I accidentally stripped the insulation. So this is why it is wrapped again. But uh, yeah, I just bought these MC4 connectors and I created these connections. I'm definitely using thinner wires than what comes off uh, the solar panel. But again, keep in mind that the solar panels are designed to be uh, wired in series with a lot of panels at the same time. So they are having th thicker uh, cables, but for a single panel, I think this uh, cable is fine. And before you set up the whole thing, you also need to sort of like configure it, which is done with these two small pots that you can see here. And um, you can see that one of them is marked as CV and the other one is CC. So the, the CV controls the voltage and the CC controls the current. So what I have done is I have a power supply which uh, I was able to set to the open circuit voltage of the solar panel. So it was around 39 volts. So I feed in the 39 volts here and I used a multimeter to measure the output voltage on these two terminals. And I was turning this pot, the CV pot, until the output voltage was uh, 28 volts or a little bit below 28 volts. And basically, this is how you set up a DC-DC buck regulator to regulate the incoming voltage down to your desired voltage, which in our case is 28 volts for the Bluetti. And you also can limit the current, but the, the current is pretty much going to be limited how much the Bluetti can draw. So what I have done is I put my screwdriver here to the CC port and I turned it counterclockwise a couple of times just to make sure that it's in the maximum current setting. And that was it. So once you have done that, you can just hook it up with your solar panel and the Bluetti and uh, it is going to work. Okay, just to make it clear why we need all this uh, wizardry to make the bigger solar panel work with the Bluetti. Because when you look at the uh, printing here for the MPPT input, it says that it accepts anything between 12 and 28 volts and eight and a half amps in the in the DC input. So that's the voltage and the current range that the Blue Eti can use in order to charge itself. And then on a bigger solar, well, for every solar panel, there is a figure which is, uh, which says open circuit voltage. And I'm just going to link in a picture of this particular solar panel and you can see that the over uh, circuit voltage is much higher than the 28 volts. So when this smaller panel is working, and when there is no load, then actually the voltage is the open circuit voltage. So when you try to connect the solar panel, then what your Bluetti is going to see is, is going to see this high voltage and it's just not going to do anything with it. And uh, so it won't start charging. But of course, with any solar panels, once you start applying a load, then the voltage starts reducing. So if I monitor the voltage at the moment on the outside. Hopefully that's going to be in shot. I think it's in shot, but you don't see the LCD panel. So that is 27 volts at the moment. So pretty much the peak of what the Bulletti can accept. But that's good because if the, uh, if the voltage is higher on the other side of the solar panel, then this voltage converter is going to convert it down to, well, I think I configured this to 27 point half, 27 and a half volts, just to be a little bit below what the Blue Eti can accept, just to be in within safe limits. So you can see that the output voltage is now 27. And if I can measure the input voltage, it's going to be a little bit hard because the wires are a bit short, but let me attempt without making a short circuit. 
Yeah, so you can see that the input voltage is 30.2 volts at the moment. Just in case it wasn't visible, so at the moment it's 33, 32 volts. That's the input voltage uh, from the solar panel. So that's being converted down to 27.5 half. Uh, by the DC-DC converter. And of course, as the voltage is lower, then the, the amps is going to go higher, minus the loss of the DC-DC converter. Unfortunately, I can't really tell how much is the loss. I mean, on the AliExpress website, it's advertised as 95% efficiency, but probably it's a little bit less. But I think there is a lot more headroom in the solar panel itself than what losses I'm going to incur in the DC-DC conversion. And just to show you how the um, characteristic of the solar panel works or how the solar panel operates. So if I disconnect this one, so there is no load on the solar panel, then we are going to see that regardless of the, of the sun, the solar panel voltage actually goes, jumps up to the open circuit voltage. So if I measure now, and probably you can tell from the uh, show that it's overcast at the moment, so it's not full sunshine, but the voltage is 37.1, so that's the open circuit voltage. As soon as I connect this and the load is applied, then you would notice that the, the voltage of the solar panel drops. But again, you need this, uh, the lower initial voltage in order to get WATI working, and this is why you need the DC-DC converter. Okay, so hopefully everything is in short now. And now you can see that I'm measuring on the output side of the DC-DC converter. So it is measuring 27 volts, so pretty much the maximum. It is charging at 60 watts, again overcast. Um, what I would ideally like to do is uh, to get another blue AT unit, uh, an EB3A, just as this one, and get a 200 watt solar panel and then test them side by side in order to see how much extra power I'm getting out of the bigger panel with the DC-DC converter. But I'm guessing that there is a significant um, increase in you know, rate of charge that basically warrants the use of the bigger panel and the DC-DC converter. Again, if you need power fast, obviously you would need, you would like to have a bigger solar panel because it will start ramping up the charge um, power much quicker than a smaller solar panel. Not to mention if the light conditions are not ideal, you would definitely get more power out of a bigger solar panel, even with a DC-DC converter, than what you would be limited with a 200 watt panel. But anyway, I think that would be all about this experiment. If you want to reproduce uh, the same thing, I'm going to leave the purchasing links to this uh, particular DC-DC converter down in the, uh, in the video description below. This happens to be a 300 watt DC-DC converter, so it's exactly the same um, uh, you know, wattage as the solar panel itself. But even if you have a bigger solar panel, I think this DC-DC converter is going to be sufficient because Regardless how much power your solar panel can generate, this blue attic unit would not draw more than 200 watts. So even this is a 300 watt DC-DC converter, it won't see anything more than 200 watts anyway. So I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.